Well, good morning. Welcome to the live stream of morning prayer at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church. I am Father Doug, and today is Friday, December 4th. It is good to be with you all this morning. I am once again uh, coming to you via Facebook Live as well as Zoom. And so uh, if you have family or friends who would like to uh, join us for morning prayer but can't be with us at 9 o'clock, the recording, the Zoom recording, will be available um, afterwards on our YouTube channel. And uh, if you'd like to follow along with our service, we encourage you to go to our virtual church website, goodshepvirtual.org, and download the uh, bulletin on our prayer and study page. We'll just take just a few moments of quiet reflection as we prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship this morning. Let us begin as we pray together, morning prayer, right to. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may, may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. The Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins through, all, through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. The invitatory canticle for this Friday morning, as usual, is the Venite which we will say together in unison. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our King and Savior, now draws near. Come, let us adore him. The Psalms appointed for this Friday morning are Psalms 16 and 17, which we will recite together in unison. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, 
You are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. Hear my plea of innocence, O Lord. Give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer, which does not come from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes be fixed on justice. Weigh my heart. Summon me by night. Melt me down. You will find no impurity in me. I give no offense with my mouth as others do. I have heeded the words of your lips. My footsteps hold fast to the ways of your law. In your paths my feet shall not stumble. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to hear to me and hear my words. Show me your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand, from those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who assault me, from my deadly enemies who surround me, they have closed their hearts to pity and their mouth speaks proud things. They press me hard, now they surround me, watching how they may cast me to the ground. Like a lion, greedy for its prey, like a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, confront them and bring them down. Deliver me from the wicked by your sword. Deliver me, O Lord, by your hand, from those whose portion in life is this world, whose bellies you fill with your treasure, who are well supplied with children, and leave their wealth to their little ones. But at my vindication I shall see your face. When I awake I shall be satisfied, beholding your likeness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from the Old Testament book of the prophet Isaiah. For Jerusalem has stumbled, and Judah has fallen because their speech and their deeds are against the Lord, defying his glorious presence. The look on their faces bears witness against them. They proclaim their sin like Sodom. They do not hide it. Woe to them, for they have brought evil on themselves. Tell the innocent how fortunate they are, for they shall eat the fruit of their labors. 
Woe to the guilty, how unfortunate they are, for what their hands have done shall be done to them. My people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, your leaders mislead you and confuse the course of your paths. The Lord rises to argue his case. He stands to judge the peoples. The Lord enters into judgment with the elders and princes of his people. It is you who have devoured the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. What do you mean by crushing my people, by grinding the face of the poor, says the Lord God of hosts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us proclaim together a song of praise. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Our second lesson this morning continues our journey through the gospel. According to Luke. Then Jesus said to them, How can they say that the Messiah is David's son? For David himself says in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Thus David calls him Lord. So how can he be his son? In the hearing of all the people, he said to the disciples, Beware of the scribes, who like to walk around in long robes, and love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, and to have the best seats in the synagogues, in places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses, and for the sake of appearances, say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He looked up and saw rich people putting their gifts into the treasury. He also saw a poor widow putting in two small copper coins. He said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put all she had to live on. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament canticle this morning is a song to the Lamb, which we will say together in unison. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore.
the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Colic of the day is continuing the, to pray the first the colic for the first Sunday of Advent. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when He shall come again in His glorious Majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A Collect for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for protection. Assist us mercifully, O Lord, in these our supplications and prayers, and dispose the way of your servants towards the attainment of everlasting salvation that among all the changes and chances of this mortal life, they may ever be defended by your gracious and ready help. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This morning we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray particularly for those throughout the Anglican communion, remembering today especially the Diocese of Shinyanga, Tanzania, the Right Reverend Johnson Chinyangole, Bishop, the Diocese of Eau Claire, the Episcopal Church, the Right Reverend William J. Lambert, Bishop, the Diocese of Gasabo, Rwanda, the Most Reverend Laurent Mbanda, Primate, and the Diocese of Edinburgh, Scotland, 
the Right Reverend John Arms Bishop. We pray also for our Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton, and the Episcopal Church, the Most Reverend Michael B. Curry, Presiding Bishop and Primate. A Prayer for Mission Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. We pray also for our own parish family and those dear to them, remembering today especially Marie, Carlos, Lisa, Nancy, Carol, Jackie, Arnie, Tammy, Alden and family, Amanda, Brian and family, Howard, Catherine, Melissa, Philip, Shannon, Bob and Augie, Rob, Carolyn, Roger, Phil, Dennis, Sean, Marie, Keith, Patricia, Grace, Lori, Karen, Wendy, and Mirabel. Our parish prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, make our parish of Good Shepherd truly a community of prayer and belonging. Raise up in our midst the resources and leadership which will enable us to act upon what you would have us do in this place and in a ministry of love and concern for others. Open my mind and heart to discern what you would have me do through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite you to offer your additional prayers of petition, thanksgiving, and intercession, either in the silence of your hearts or by offering them in the comment box or chat box that they might be offered aloud this morning. Jesse, we do join you in praying for our youth group starting up on Wednesday nights. We thank you for the 20 youth that attended two nights ago, and thank you for the opportunity to gather and have fellowship and connect because our youth especially need that support and the sense of your presence in community at this time. Do continue to give thanks for our youth group and for our young families. We pray for our parents who are navigating through uncertain challenges as, as parents and leaders in their homes. Pray for grace and wisdom and patience and above all the abundance of your love. And Octavia, we do lift up your family and join you in praying for your family in Athens as you grieve the loss of your brother Mark. Father, we pray for your grace and for your love and for your comfort and mercy to be with Octavia and her family here and abroad. Strengthen them and surround them with your presence and your love. Thanks, Father, for the gift of scientists and for the work that has been done thus far on creating vaccines and treatments 
for COVID-19. We thank you, Lord, for the progress that is being made and for the vaccines that will soon become available. We pray that they will be safe. We pray for those in the United Kingdom who will be some of the first to receive these vaccines. And we pray, Father, for wisdom and prudence as we move forward. But we also thank you for this um, gift of knowledge and wisdom that you have imparted to your people because we know, Lord, that you are the source of all wisdom and all knowledge. And we pray for um, th these vaccines to be a useful means to eradicate this virus in, in advance of our lives. And Lord, we pray for all of our congregations throughout this diocese, throughout the Episcopal Church, who are making difficult decisions about how to proceed. Some are staying closed, some are staying open, some are contemplating other changes and transitions. We pray for wisdom, Lord. These are not easy decisions. We pray for all of our priests and pastors and, and staff members and ask, Lord, for grace and uh, just the empowerment of your Holy Spirit to keep the course, to remain steadfast and vigilant, and to not grow weary, even in the face of many challenges and continuing uncertainty. And Lord, I thank you for each person on the call this morning on Facebook or Zoom and all who will be watching this later today and throughout the weekend. Lord, bless them, strengthen them, encourage them, and may this time of prayer be a time of solace and renewal for them, body, mind, and spirit. And Lord, we summarize all of these prayers by offering you our praise and thanks as we pray together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining me for this time of morning prayer. It is always a blessing to be with you all. I pray that you will have a safe and a restful Saturday and weekend. And uh, I'll see some of you on Sunday, and I know many of you will be joining us by live stream. Have a great weekend, and uh, we will be back here at 9 o'clock on Monday morning. God bless you all.